This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got Sue Poldervart with me. You are the Executive Director of RNJ Youth Services. You're our neighbor here on Brockville Street. <laughs> yes, we are neighbors and I think it's the first time we've met, so this is great. <laughs> it has been. And I, how long has, have you been next door? Oh gosh, probably like six years, six maybe years? seven years. Wow, yeah. wow, yeah, yeah. It's about time. Yeah, it's about time. Absolutely. Yes. Well, welcome to FYI because you do so much next door. We were trying to just go through some of the things and, and absolutely, you need to come back because we can't do this all in the first <laughs> 10 minutes. So I'd be happy to. Uh, what What is it that our NJ Youth Services does? In a nutshell, because yes, you do so much. Yes, I know. Uh, well, we started in 1987 um, as a very small organization, and we've grown over the years. Uh, we cover all of the counties of Lanark, Leeds, and Granville. Um, and a lot of what we, we started out doing was strictly youth justice, so kids involved with the justice system. Uh, we've grown and expanded additional services for youth in the justice system, but we've also branched out to provide er more earlier intervention programming so we can try to catch the kids before they find themselves in trouble um, and uh, offer opportunities for all kids in the community, not just those in trouble. Okay, and one of those uh, programs that we were talking about earlier is the Choices Program. Yeah. And that, that helps with this. Yeah, so the Rebound Choices Program is one that we um, typically run in the schools. We have great partnerships with both the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario and the Upper Canada District School Board. Um, and we deliver the program typically to grade seven and eight students. And the, the idea behind the program is to provide um, education around substances, how to make good decisions, informed decisions, um, so that kids, uh, you know, are, are not finding themselves in, in bad situations and that they, they know what they're getting into or how to protect themselves um, in situations with their peers uh, and substances. So conflict resolution, uh, information about substances, healthy relationships, all of those things that are good for all kids. And you've had uh, your board of directors too. You were telling me some names this morning, and I, I know our, our friend here on FYI, Constable Aaron Tompkins, is on your board of directors as well as Jackie Coldry. Yes, yes, everybody knows them. <laughs> yes, for sure. Who else is on your board? Uh, we have a number of people uh, in the Brockville. We have another police officer. Um, we have a couple of retired folks um, uh, on the board as well. Uh, so they cover, again, representing our, our service area, so not necessarily from Smith Falls, but uh, we're very fortunate we have an excellent board uh, supporting agency. Okay, okay. Now you've got so many programs. I was looking at your website yesterday <laughs> too, and like I say, you have to come back because there's so much that you, you do over there. So uh, you say typically you, when you first got started, it was to help people, uh, help youth that have gotten in trouble with, with the law? Yeah. But now you're reaching out and you know, helping people before yeah, so, so we've really expanded. When I started uh, in this position, I think it was in 2007, I think there was four staff. And we're up to, I think, between 12 and 13, depending. Um, and uh, so, you know, we have our pre and post charge programs uh, for kids who, who have had uh, committed a criminal offense. We have our mental health court worker program supporting kids who have mental health concerns before the courts. Uh, we have our adult direct accountability program in Lanark County. Uh, which is a diversion program for adults who are finding themselves before the courts. Um, we have a school program, we have an after school program. So lots of different things and, and as I mentioned the choices program. So we want to be able to provide, continue to provide those justice services, but we also want to support all, all youth um, and at an earlier stage as well. The other program we have too which is quite busy is our intersections program. So that's kids who are uh, between 8 to 17 who are having a first police contact, but it's not something that, that they've done that's criminal in nature, uh, either because they're under the age of 12, in which case they can't be charged for something, or they're over the age of 12 and the police have been called, but they haven't really done anything that would warrant a charge. The idea behind that is to support them and support their family to, to navigate them to services and help them so that they can kind of get back on the right track and avoid any further uh, contact with police. So it's been a very popular program and a very effective program in getting kids support at an earlier stage as well. So how do does RNJ <coughs> get involved? Like, is it a referral service? Do the police tell you? Yeah, I've most got of this person, most of maybe? our programs, for the, the majority of programs, um, are police or court referral only. Um, however, there there are some that aren't. So the Choices Program, we have an after school program in Brockville. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Our our school program. So there's. Uh, you know, most of them are, are police or crown referral only, but we, we also like to say we're never going to turn anybody away. So even if we don't have the service that is what they need, we'll help to get them to the service that, that will be helpful to them. Okay, so maybe I'm just thinking if a parent is struggling a little bit and doesn't yeah. know who to turn to, can yeah, they call they you? Yeah, they can always call us and if we don't have 
what they need, we'll certainly get them to somebody who can help them. Okay, yeah. and, and on average, how many youth are you, and, and you're, you're dealing with <laughs> adults too, and I know you, you don't yeah. know an exact number, but <laughs> what you have uh, as an yeah. estimate is. You know, I, I should have checked that number before I got here, but uh, you know, our, our, for example, our after school program, we're serving uh, once a week 200 to 300 kids a night. Uh, our choices program, we're running like classes of kids, uh, usually about five or so a week. Uh, throughout the year, plus all of our diversion clients. So I know pre-pandemic we were doing about 600, um, but a lot of our programs have been evolving, such as the after-school program. So I'd say we're much higher than that at this point. Okay. Next time I come back, I'll have a number for you. All right, all right. <laughs> and I was going to ask you that too. How did you get through COVID? How how did you? You know what? It was uh, it was a very interesting uh, time. Um, it was actually quieter for us. Uh, but we're starting to see things getting busier again. Um, you know, certainly our school program is very busy. Kids really struggled with the online learning, uh, mental health programs. Kids really struggle with, with their mental health during that time. So it was quieter in some ways, but, but st you know, it was the co sort of the calm before the storm. I think we're starting to see that kids really need support. Right okay, now. and I, when I was reading through the programs that you're doing and everything, you, you do uh, deal with, with uh, the youth with mental health issues as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any of our programs are supporting the mental health and well-being of, of anybody we're, we're serving, um, but there are programs that we have that are specific to supporting mental health, such as the Mental Health Court Worker Program, our Connections School Program, to which we do serve. It's located in Brockville, but we do serve uh, youth in Lanark County um, who come to the program. Uh, you know, it's all focused on you know, not just one piece. So it's not just academics there. It's mm -hmm. well-being, um, and so we want to make sure that we're always supporting that uh, that that part of a person uh, when they're coming to us. So would you support somebody as well too if they find themselves a youth having to go to court? Would they call you? And yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the mental health court worker program, we do court support as well as diversion. Um, and we can always do the, the court support. Through the pandemic, we had the availability for people to come to our office to do virtual court if they didn't have technology. Uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, the easiest thing I say is if, if you're not sure if we can be of help, don't hesitate to call us. And like I said, if we can't help you, we'll make sure to find who can help you uh, meeting your specific needs or your child's needs. And you have volunteers too. You need volunteers. Yes, we do have volunteers. Uh, it's limited to program and the pandemic certainly changed that. Um, our Choices program used a lot of volunteers, um, but that's been really challenging because there's been a lot of restrictions with who can come into schools and things like that for an, you know good reason. Um, so we're just getting back to using volunteers, but of course we have our board of directors. Um, you know, we have a few programs uh, that do still use volunteers. Yeah. Wow. wow. Well, we, we've <laughs> just touched the surface on what you, you're doing uh, <laughs> next door here on, and you're located uh, next door to us at 270 Brockville Street, 275 Brockville Street. 270 Unit B. 270 yes. Unit B, yes. <laughs> uh, I guess that makes us A or C. Something I don't like know. That. You're yeah, in the yeah. middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're the, we're the middle one. You're in the middle. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's right. great location for us because we're close to lots of the schools. Well, um, absolutely you are too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we're close to uh, Chimo. We're close to SFDCI and uh, St. Francis yeah. School and walking distance from so many. So, yeah. yeah, that's what's great about a small community. We can walk anywhere almost. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Like we say, we just touched the surface on what you're doing at RNJ Youth Services here in, in Smith Falls and the Brockville area as well too. And you've been with them again how long? Uh, since 2007, I, I kind of lost track of how long that's been, but uh, I actually started as a volunteer, so um, I've, I've come, you know, different yeah. steps within the organization, and, uh, you know, I might be biased, but we do great work and, and really uh, proud of the staff and, and the commitment they have to helping our the people that they work with. Well, and you know, that says a lot. When you start as a volunteer and you, st you, you got hired on as a staff and you've yeah. remained here and you've got the longevity, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Good for you. Thank Good you. Good for you. Thanks for joining us. Sue Poldervart, the Executive Director at RNJ Youth Services right here in Smith Falls and in Brockville as well. Thanks All for joining us. All of Lanark leads in Granville. All of Lanark, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to coming back. Absolutely.